Welcome to section 26 of the parasites. This is our overview figure showing the parasites you need to know for step one. In this lecture, we will be talking about the first ectoparasite, Sarcoptes scabii. Our story takes place in the home of an innocent mom and dad who made the mistake of letting their son's friends come over and play. Here's one of the hooligans right here. He's got himself a nice scab on his arm. This scab represents Sarcoptes scabii, the parasite that causes scabies. So arm scab for scabies. Look at all these neighborhood kids swarming this poor woman. These freaky swarmy children represent the fact that scabies is common in children. If you look closely, you can see these kids have been playing with red markers. They have red marker lines all over their hands, including the webbed spaces of their fingers. Their hands are shown in this way to help you remember that scabies often burrows in and infects the interwebbed spaces of the fingers. Now look at the dad here. It looks like he's already been attacked by those little goobers. They made his skin look just like theirs and got them all markered up. You can even see they ripped his shirt to ribbons in the assault. Well, this markered skin of the poor dad represents the fact that scabies is transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact. And if you look closely, you can see they even drew the markers on the interwebbed spaces of his fingers. Now he's trying desperately to scratch the lines off. The fact that he's scratching these areas so much represents that scabies causes itching, or pruritus. Here's an image showing dermatologic findings of scabies. Notice multiple small erythematous papules. Patients often show excoriations, indicating how itchy they can be. Although you can't really see excoriations on this patient, you can at least see these superficial scratch marks. Now this child in the tidy whities is enjoying these events a lot. Look at that sinister grin he has. And he's got all the weapons, the red markers, at his feet. Wrapped around his arms is a sinister looking serpent. This represents the serpiginous burrow lines created by scabies under the skin. To reinforce this idea, the kid also has serpiginous lines created by the markers on his arms. It looks like the mom had just shucked all this corn. You can see there's a lot of corn spread all across the counter, creating a total layer of corn. The sweet lady was going to feed all these monsters before they ransacked the house. Now this layer of corn represents the stratum corneum of the epidermis. It's this layer that the scabies burrow down to, and from there, they travel around and create those serpiginous lines we discussed earlier. This is a diagram showing the layers of the skin. It's discussed in great detail in the MSK physiology chapter. Right now, just look at the epidermis. The most superficial layer of the epidermis is the stratum corneum. Scabies will burrow down to this level and then just travel around. Now look over here at this daughter with the perm. She was innocently trying to use her blow dryer when one of the little monsters jammed a marker in it. Now her dryer is malfunctioning and putting out smoke. Well, this girl with a perm represents permethrin, which is a good treatment for scabies infections. Permethrin kills the parasites by disrupting nerve cell function. Well, this permed girl's malfunctioning hair dryer has caused so much smoke that it's billowing all around the entire house. This all-encompassing smoke represents the fact that all members of the house should be treated with permethrin. Infected patients can be asymptomatic for a few weeks before symptoms. Therefore, all members of the house need to be treated, whether or not they have symptoms, because they can keep the infestation alive without realizing it, just passing it back and forth indefinitely in the household. So, smoke all around the house for all household members should be treated. Now going back to the poor dad, we can see that he was doing laundry before the attack. This laundry represents the fact that all bedding and clothing in the house must be washed. That means you need to do your laundry and clean all the clothes and linens as part of the treatment. Again, just like permethrin treatment, the washing of linens applies to all household members, even if they aren't symptomatic. Now that we've covered the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A 35-year-old male presents to his family physician with itching on his hands for two weeks. The patient states that several of his children have experienced similar symptoms recently. Physical examination reveals several red papules on the patient's hand as shown below. The physician writes a prescription for topical permethrin. Which of the following should also be considered as part of the management of this patient's condition? A. Topical permethrin only for the symptomatic children. B. Wash linens of only the symptomatic children. C. Wash linens of each household member. Or D. Topical permethrin for the entire household of only symptomatic contacts. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has scabies. It's very itchy. It's infectious, as we can see that two of his children also have it, and the photo is consistent with scabies. With the scabies outbreak in mind, the correct answer is choice C. All members of the house should have their linens washed. Recall these little kids going around terrorizing the two adults with all that grabbing and touching. This is to help you remember the infection is spread by person-to-person -person contact. Therefore, all members of the house should be treated. And what's the treatment? Permethrin and washing of linens. And everyone in the house should be treated. And that smoke filling the entire house is to help reinforce this idea. Now choice A is wrong because it excludes the asymptomatic members of the house, even though they could be harboring the infection. B is wrong for the same reason, and so is D. And with that, you've learned everything you need to know about scabies.